This wheel is wobbling. Yeah. But Your noise is in here. It is? Yeah. Good morning, Light Bright Nation. Good news is, lucky for us, this noise started shortly after we arrived in Sand Hollow, or in Utah, basically. And lucky for us again, Carbon Off Road is located right here next to St. George and Herc in Utah. And as you might be able to see, they have a ton of experience working on vehicles that are beaten up way harder than the Steptile. So we're gonna go ahead and have them take a look at our Jeep and see if we can get to the bottom of this noise because originally we thought it may be a ring and pinion, but at second thought, maybe it's not. <laughs> what are we gonna do first? Get it up on some jack stands because ideally on jack stands we can just let it spin and hopefully pinpoint where the noise is coming from. Hopefully. Oh yeah, the whole thing's wobbly. Well, that could be the tire though. No, that's the whole... Good man, actually. Yeah. Uh, the bench shaft. On both sides? Go. Mm -hmm. no. That one's tired. In the middle or from I mean this this wheel is wobbling. Yeah. But Your noise is in here. It is? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that sucks. <laughs> well, that sucks. I don't think anybody makes axes yet. So you can see them. That's one from the caliper, too. When it's moving, you can watch the caliper move. Yeah. Get the gas, babe. Spun up the wheels, spun up, got it spun up, and you were listening to it. Yeah, I uh, used a little punch just so I could hear inside. Uh, the sound was kind of resonating everywhere, but it's definitely coming about tire speed, so we're going to guess it's maybe gear set or carrier bearings. Uh, it's much slower than the pinion or drive shaft, so we're going to pull the cover and see if there's anything inside that alarms okay. us. And then this one side wobbling more. So it could be a bent shaft that, and? That could be bent, but I don't. it's not the cause of your noise, unfortunately, but uh, you might have something starting to bend over there as well. <laughs> okay, so the East Coast kicked their ass. <laughs> Sounds like it. All right. Just a little bit. All right, let's pull that and see what's going on. <laughs> sounds like the East Coast kicked their ass. That's what it sounds so like. A bent shaft and clack, 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 possibly clack, clack, clack. a... Oh, and? There's yeah, an and? I think it's bent shaft and... Is it the bent shaft wasn't bad enough, but... Uh, the thing that just sucks is it's, at least noise-wise, whatever it is, only really started making a noise like two days ago, after we had already arrived in Utah. And then today, obviously, it's significantly louder. Yeah. Alright, so they're so. going to go drop that. Alright, jump okay. off. They're back there. It's breathing fumes. Breathing fumes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Coming out, or are we safe? There's, there's, there's a noise. There's yeah, one. There's one. Uh, that's unfortunate. Opinion? Is that a tooth? Looks a tooth like of it. some sort. Some sort of tooth. Oh yeah, buddy. There you are. There it is. There's two of them gone. Uh, one's missing. <laughs> <laughs> one's somewhere in here. So, 
without wheeling, without towing or anything, just driving, you think that's possible to make it to LA? Um, I, mean, I know you wouldn't recommend it to just anybody. I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah, I'd have to look and get the teeth. If we get the chunks out and flush it, possibly. Uh, I'd have to look at the teeth of the. And this isn't recommended. Yeah. No. This is definitely not recommended. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Definitely this not. is but stupid Brittany and Kevin trying to achieve something. Yes. Right. This is this is us. Sick. One, can we make it? Right. We inspect the teeth and flush it out. Sure, there's a possibility. It's not a bearing, which is good because a bearing is what could or potentially seize up. Um, broken teeth, the worst case it'll ever do is break more teeth. And then essentially the penny will just spin. Right. And then and you just be, won't move. So that's just for me probably balancing it. And just, uh, it probably got stressed somewhere. Yeah. And then it let go whenever you started to hear the noise. So it doesn't have to fail at the moment in time. Right. The reason that people upgrade to aftermarket housings is the housings have more material. And so what happens in the stock housings is you get what's called gear deflection. So if this thing gets bound up or, or gets the right load, the housing actually slightly flexes and the gears can move around and it just starts to stress crack them. I wouldn't drive it anymore while we're here in Utah. Like I said, the worst case is it's gonna stop moving. It won't, it's not gonna weld itself, that's for sure. So It's not gonna be detrimental where, you know, it, go it'll, into a 70 mile an hour skid or essentially something. Essentially, it'll just, if it gets worse, it'll break more teeth. Essentially, you'll just have no power. It'll free spin the drive shaft. You'll not be accelerating anymore and then you'll pull over. Okay. <laughs> Now I won't tell you just yet why we're going to LA. You'll have to wait until the next video to find out about that, which is more exciting than even this. Like way more exciting. Although the word exciting is probably subjective in this situation, but more on that in the next video. So what, would a truss have helped or possibly? Not necessarily in the rear. So what we see in the rear is load-based flex. Okay. And that's forward to back like a corkscrew. A oh, truss I got is almost you. always on top. Okay, right. So a front truss helps because the front bends. Gotcha. The rear pulls. So if you have a rear bent uh, housing, it's nine times out of ten bird's eye view going to be either bent forward or back. It's less likely to bend a rear uh, in a smiley face like a front end. But the gears are set up between seven thousandths. A piece of paper is four. It's three to four thousandths. So you're talking about the, the, the gap between the teeth is two pieces of paper thick. So if that Very flexes thin. just beyond that. So it that. just has to flex. Four, two pieces of paper movement and those teeth have either opened up or ran to zero and so they just stress themselves and then they fail whenever they fail so that that's probably what happened is wheeling east coast whatever probably stress cracked them and then they just let go somewhere okay. around here so you're saying but you're saying 100 percent it's because of the axle i would i would guess that that style without it have happened on a trail like a pinpoint yeah you jumped it it broke um, just failing around driving, they were stress cracked, and that is nine times out of ten because the housing flexes. The suggestion <laughs> would be something aftermarket that has more metal, uh, and it keeps so it avoids stronger, that happening. Stronger rear axle is yeah. what what we're looking at now. Right. Which I mean, we upgraded the front, and <laughs> yep. of course, the one we we didn't pay attention to. Although, does anyone have an upgraded rear yet for the JL? Well, unless you throw a sixty or an eighty under it. Yeah. Oh. Which is it for the JL specifically? That's just it would be cut to length and all the. Yeah. You, know, you could it make would, it work. It would be right. similar to the front, so it would be right. a 60 that would be running a JK gear set. <laughs> so ultimately what we've just discovered is we've had complete rear end failure. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's... Where we originally thought it was Well, not maybe... complete. No, it's still drivable. No, I, would... I mean, it's still drivable, but I'm saying like where we originally thought it was maybe just the gears or just the axle. It's, we have discovered that it is the, now both. It is the gears and the axle. <laughs> the gears and the axle. And, and, and that, I, I don't think the housing is bent, but... I mean, That's that possible would... too. At this point, what does it matter? <laughs> uh... So ending up here at Carbon Off Road wasn't totally by chance, although we were definitely here sooner than we had originally planned because that over there was definitely not planned. But we did originally plan on coming by here anyways because of this right here. They actually have a desert racing school here at Carbon Off Road where they take you out to the desert and they teach you how to race, not just in side-by-sides, but also in these bad boys right here. So 
So we kind of came by here because we wanted to learn a little bit more about that because it sounded like something that might be really fun to do in the future. But we also had another reason that we wanted to stop by. And this one's a little more hush-hush, a little more secret, and I can't get into it too much because I don't want to spill all of the beans, but it involves all of that right there. So all of those cameras that you see right there are more or less, it's a project that Kevin and I have been working really, really hard on over the last several months, uh, especially over the last couple weeks. And it's actually the reason that we're here in Sand Hollow to even begin with. This was just <laughs> our luck, but we'll see how it goes. But yeah, we've got, we have some really big things, guys, like coming, like a lot of big things. Okay, so here's the scoop, basically. Short version is Northridge 4x4 came in clutch and they are rescuing our ass completely. Austin with Carbon Off-Road was able to get a hold of them. We called a lot of places and they either did not have 513 gears in stock or they wouldn't be able to get them to us in a very short it's, period of it, time. It's late in the day on Friday. Northridge came in clutch. They are overnighting us a set of 513 Yukon gears to rescue the stepchild. Yes, and thank you Yukon for having them Available. Available. <laughs> but anyways, as you can notice, we are driving a Jeep right now. Um, it is not our Jeep, but it is a JL because American Adventure Labs, which is also located in Sand Hollow, <laughs> Utah, here in Hurricane, Utah, and they were sweet enough to let us commandeer one of their Jeeps to drive around in so we wouldn't be totally stranded without well, our Jeep. They're only letting us drive the Jeep, the Jeep well, for, for one reason. Well, look behind us. So we are, if you can see, <laughs> so we are towing the the side-by-side, -side, aka the wild child, by the way, for those of you who are wondering. So we are towing the wild child with us to UTV Pros. Because we have a Corbin's custom street legal kit waiting for us there. Yep, because in Utah, you can actually drive side-by-sides on the street as long as they are street legal. So we are gonna go do that because the stepchild is dead in the water and if we can't have fun in the stepchild, we might as well have fun. We do have, have to have fun. In something. Yeah, we have yep. to have fun somehow. Yeah. Let's do that. We're gonna go do that. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. Now, in case you're wondering exactly what we got from Corbin Custom Works, that's all of this goodness right here. It basically includes turn signals as well as a horn because you need to let people know which way you want to turn and you need to be able to hawk at people when they cut you off on the highway. Although I don't think you can actually drive these on the highway here. Now, in addition to this, we also got a couple other goodies from Polaris directly, which include side mirrors. You also need, I believe, to be street legal. We have a rear view mirror. We got a partial windshield because we've Notice that having full windshields on a razor makes it really hot inside. Yeah, and you get no airflow. It yeah, sucks. Yeah, you get zero airflow, which and it kind of defeats the purpose of having this open styled machine that is awesome right. to drive. So now this is just a little wind deflector, basically. Yeah, a little wind deflector when you're going high speeds. And then also we got a front bumper and a winch. We're gonna get all this installed. We've already got the guys over at UTV Pros dismembering or dismembering. Dis just dismantling. dismantling. I, I don't think you want to dismember. <laughs> Let's not dismember her. <laughs> They're dismantling basically the razor to get it ready to put all this on. And Kevin and I are gonna actually help, I think. Are we? All right, so while we've got Justin and Sonny here working on the wiring and installing these little turn signals for us, we've got Scott over here who's going to give us a little explanation on this winch, some cool things about it, and also a little kind of trick that a big trick. he knows, a big trick. So this box right here. What's nice, so this box, uh, it controls an auto stop on the front of this. You can see the wires right there. Oh yeah. So what that does is when that's connected, as soon as it senses it coming together, it, it stops it. Well, that's really nice if you're not looking at it, but the problem is- You got a little dangly bit. Exactly. You, you, got, a little, you, got, you got a little dangly, dangly bit off the front of your thing. And so if you're doing some hardcore rock crawling and stuff, you could just beat the crap out of it because it's not tied up against yep. the winch. So we're gonna delete this because I don't want that. So, and not even beating on it, I just don't like the noise. 
Oh, the clean, onion clean, is going to yeah, be really clean. obnoxious. Oh, yeah. I hate it. <laughs> anyway, all you have to do is all these wires and everything. It's gone. This, everything. Let's take it out. Just, un okay. just yep. unscrew these two screws. Yep. Let's pull that whole thing gone. out. Okay. And then all we have to do is we're going to run power and ground, right? Because that's all we care about for the winch. And then on the wireless remote, we are going to connect it using this Y connector. And I probably should have gotten the name of this to the contactor. contactor. I was going to say the thing from uh, Back to the Future. I was going to say continue and transfunctioner, but, but it's, yeah, I mean, that works it's, too. that's the other way. <laughs> so all we're going to do is we're literally just going to connect it like that. So you're more or less bypassing auto. So, and this guy. Yeah, it's the auto stop switch, <laughs> whatever you want to call it. And then actually, so this cord. You yep. can cut these off and hardwire a hard switch if you'd like as well. What's nice about this winch, this is awesome because it has a rapid recovery option. So I didn't know this. I didn't so know this at all. You've got three settings. You've got your, there we go. So you should be in neutral there. That's that's uh, low for L. pole. Okay. And then if you go all the way. High. Your high, that's your rapid recovery. What does that when mean? When you pull it in, it is, is it like, fast? it's fast. But you're not oh. supposed to put a load on so it there or no, you are? No load. No, no load. load. Okay, so this is if you're spooled out 50 feet. And you and, and you need to suck it in. You go to high and it just burr, but you don't want to load you don't on. Not to recover with it. You just just to to spool. Just to spool it in. Basically. That's, That's pretty dope. Why doesn't my winch on my Jeep have that? We went from a Kevin to like I don't know Brad Pitt or something. I don't know. <laughs> Brad Pitt. <laughs> Look at how handsome it is now. Wait, you didn't think with the fat face it was handsome? Oh, I mean, no, it was way better looking before. A tip or trick? Tip All or right. trick. If tip. you're cutting these, cut them flush. If anybody doesn't cut their zip, if they cut their zip tie like this, they're not your friend. Oh, yeah. Oh, you all the LVK, you stab you a hole cut. in your arm. <laughs> So we're just figuring out how long these guys have been here and how long they've been doing this. And we found out they just met at a gay bar two and a half months ago. <laughs> no, but for real, how, how did you guys come about? Well, Sonny started St. George Side by Side on Facebook and that's how me and him met. I worked in the oil field for the last eight years and I was sick and tired of oh, leaving my family. And yeah. yeah. Called up Sonny, said let's start a business dude. And there you go. And you guys have been packed. And the rest is history. been packed ever since. Right. Seriously, not a slow day. I think we've all, I've been turning rentals for almost 30 years. So, from a heavy equipment longer now. than I've been alive. <laughs> so, if you have a side by side and you're in St. George, Hurricane area, or you're in Sand Hollow and you break something, you know exactly where to bring your side by side. Yeah, so, remember those holes for the uh, the UH MW skids that Kevin Fubard? because he drilled them too big because he said to just waller them out <laughs> instead of using the correct drill bit. Well, UTV Pros is fixing that for us. Yeah, so I, yeah. Yeah. All right, right blinker, left blinkers. All right, these guys are super bad. That was two and a half hours, start to finish. Blinkers in the rear. Winch, front Winch, bumper. Front bumper. Yeah. The horn. horn. Uh, what else do we do? We change Side the mirrors. oil, we change the front. The front diff, mirrors, windshield, rear view mirror, and they messed up, they, they oh, fixed and my- and they fixed Kevin's mistake. And they fixed my mistake with the skids and the over drilling <laughs> holes and stuff. So, so side all by that, side, officially street legal, yes. and it got its first service. And it got its first service. All that in about two and a half hours. So, not even two and a half, I mean, that was two and a half hours with us filming and them explaining stuff. And so, joking around and asking questions and being all around obnoxious and everything yeah. the technician doesn't so, want in the shop. So needless to say, <laughs> these guys know what the hell they're doing because they knocked. Uh, that would have taken me a whole day. If you have a side-by-side -side and you need work done yeah. and you're in Sand Hollow and or St. George or Hurricane, Utah. Yeah. UTV Pros. UTV Pros. Dang, look, I'm glowing. I got, I got yeah, some a little sun. Tan, yeah. yeah, they look good. All right, you guys, so <laughs> the gears have finally arrived Carbon Off-Road has already started disassembling uh, our ruined ones, the chipped ones basically, so they are currently working. Look at that. To get the old gears out so we can put the new gears in so that we can hopefully revive the stepchild and drive to LA, which is... Okay, so now while they do that, I do want to take a second. A, 
to show you the new gears, but B also explain to you why they are doing this on the ground because they were not prepared for this <laughs> any more than we were. But they are being amazing by helping us out to get us back up on the road with this gear install that they are willing to do it on the ground, which for anyone who's really done any work on their vehicle on the ground, you realize that it kind of sucks. Now, as for gears themselves, as you can see, we have the Yukon 513 gear set here, which will be going into the stepchild along with our full installation kit. Now, again, I have to give a massive, super duper huge shout out, obviously not just to Carbon Off-Road, but also to Northridge 4x4 for saving our asses, basically, because getting these gears here this quickly and rescuing us just in time to make the next leg of our journey is a huge deal. So again, link in the description, check them out. If you haven't already, they don't just sell gears, they sell literally anything you could ever want for your vehicle. All right, so I got the passenger rear axle out here. Well, the axle shaft and we have a wobble and I'll show you why we have the why we have the wobble. So you can see the contact stops right there. And if you look, it's twisted. Right there, down, you'll notice these lower halves are twisted that way, just a smidge. Now I have no idea why these would be twisted. It wouldn't have to do with the East Coast rock bouncing type stuff <laughs> y'all wanted us to do. break something on this trail if you keep doing that yeah <laughs> nothing like that would actually twist this shaft so anyway we are not gonna replace this right now because it's um I mean it's still okay it's it's a little wobbly on that side but there's nothing that's gonna destroy anything in there for right now and we're headed to LA where we will have this fixed we'll fix this in we LA. will fix this in LA somehow also we have something really 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 big to well, show you this, in LA. This isn't what we were originally planning on fixing in LA. Yeah, we're going to LA for something that's like the biggest thing that we've done on the channel. And we can't talk about it just yet. But we'll fix this then. Little twisty boy. Little twisty boy. Yeah. No big deal. So we'll slap that back in once we get the uh, new gears in. Okay, so here's a better look at our poor uh, ring gear right here, and yeah. Yes. So, Austin, diagnosis? Um, so my guess is it looked like everything was installed fine. Yeah. Um, everything felt good as we took it apart. My best guess, probably just too much stress or... Kevin and I being dumb on the trail? Yeah, maybe a, <laughs> maybe a little Coast. too much throttle or something. So, you know, you guys are towing and putting a lot of stress on it. So yeah. probably what it looks like is it probably just stress fractured. And then over time, it just was going to let go at some point. And so uh, it just happened to let go around here. Okay, so at this point, really all that's left is cover and oil. Yeah, actually, everything looks good. Back in and done, yep. Okay, so obviously we still have the bent, well, not technically bent, but twisted axle shaft. We will be replacing that soon to let you know how <laughs> when we get to LA. Also, stay tuned, obviously, for the next video where you hear what else we've been dealing with for the last couple days, which is, if you can believe it, even worse than this. So, but Carmen Off Road, Austin, Brian, who's also been helping us, guys. Thank you so much. And just so these guys know, obviously y'all don't just do gears. Right. You also do axles. Yep. What else do y'all like kind of, a little more about what you guys do. That way if anyone is ever in Sand Hollow and you need help or work done, or just in general, you need gears or axles or anything. Yeah, so we, we do, we manufacture thermal axle shafts. Okay. And then we do complete axle assemblies. And so that's uh, that was our big stuff. So we also do a race school. That's a sister company. So the race school teaches. I people. touched on that earlier. Yeah, and anybody that wants to get into desert racing from beginners to advanced, we take them out and help them, you know, fine tune some skills and get them in fire suits and all suited up and make sure they like it. So 
which I have a feeling will probably be in a future video at some point in time because that sounds like yeah. a sh load of fun. Yes. So we'll probably do that also in the future. Carbon Off Road, thank you. Northridge 4x4, thank you so much for coming through and getting us the gear so quickly. Thank you for watching. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. And as always, remember you can find all of your Light Bright Nation merch at lightbrightstudios.com, all of your Light Bright Nation decals at pixeldecals.com. We love you, and we will see you next time. Bye! You got bloated kiss. Mwah! <laughs>